Hi there. In today's video, we will be talking about elite code problem number 1572, a matrix diagonal sum. So in this problem, it says we are given a square matrix and we are to return the sum of the matrix diagonals. So only the sum of all the elements on the primary diagonal and all the elements on the secondary diagonal that are not part of the primary diagonal. It's kind of wordy, but really it's saying we want to start from the top left and go to the bottom right and count the sum of all those numbers. Likewise, we want to start at the top right and go to the bottom left and count the sum of all those numbers. However, if we duplicate any numbers, like in this case the 5 is duplicated, then we want to only count it one time. So in this example you can see uh, this, this matrix would return 25 and there's a, a, a reason why and at an even matrix of just ones, we would have one, two, three, four ones in this direction, four ones in the other direction, none of them overlap, so we would have a sum of eight. And likewise, in this last example, we would have a diagonal of five and another diagonal of five, but because the five is in there both times, we only include it once. So the answer would be five here. So the constraints are, that it is a square, it will be no bigger than 100 on, on both sides, and that each value inside of this matrix will be between 1 and 100. So let's get into it. So I've drawn out two examples here. The first is the one from the problem, and the second is one I just made up. But it, it's important to consider odd and even cases whenever you're dealing with a two-dimensional array problems. So in this case, we care about the 1, the 5, and the 9, and then also the 3, the 5, and the 7, like this. But notice how the 5 is counted twice. So this is 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, but there is an extra 5, so we would subtract 5, and uh, we'd get an answer. Let's see, what is this? 10, be 25. So in the other case, in the even case, we care, starting from the top left, about this 1, 3, 6, and 8, as well as this 2, 4, five, and seven. Now notice in this case, there's no overlap. So this is one plus three plus six plus eight, and then two, four, five, and seven. So if you add up these numbers, you will get an answer of 36. And notice how we didn't need to subtract anything because there was no overlap in the middle. And if you keep doing these cases with odd and even cases, you'll, you'll see that the only time you'll ever subtract is if you're dealing with an odd matrix of odd length. So the next question is, well, how do we calculate from top left to bottom right and top right to bottom left? And I think that's, that's easy to be done if you look at the indices. So what do I mean by indices? So 0, 0, let's say, is the top left. Then we have position 0, 1, and 0, 2. We would have 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. And then for our 3 by 3 case, it would look like this. If our row position, row, column, I didn't put the commas in, but this is row column. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. Well, if we're going from top left to bottom right, look at this pattern. It's 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. So it's whenever the numbers match. And if we're going from top right to bottom left, we'll notice that we start at row 0, then we go to row 1 and row 2, but in each time, the number decreases. It goes 2, 1, 0. In other words, it's the length of the array, minus 1, 
minus whatever row we're at. So from top left to bottom right, this is the easy case, it's just going to be at some i i, at some number i between 0 and the length of the array, we want to have the sum of all that. And if we're going from top right to bottom left, to bottom left like this, it's sum index i to start at. But then it's the length of the array, which we'll call n, minus i minus 1. So if i is 0, we would have 0 and n is 3, because in this case the length is 3. We'd have 3 minus 0 minus 1 and 2. Likewise, if i is 1, we would have 3 minus 1 minus 1, which is 1. And then finally, when i is 2, 3 minus 2 minus 1 is 0. So that's how we can get from the top right to the bottom left. So the last thing to talk about then is how do we calculate the middle index? Well, if I know my length is 3 in this case, how do I get to 1, 1? Well, if I do 3 divided by 2, I get 1.5, but in Java, this is just 1. So if I take the length of the array and I divide by 2, I get the midpoint. So I can look to see first if the array is odd, and if it is odd, then I want to subtract the midpoint, and I get the midpoint by taking the length n divided by 2. So it would look something like this for the midpoint. Okay, so now let's look at the code for how we can actually implement this. So to code this thing up, we first need to start by declaring an int variable to keep track of the sum, and then remember to return that at the end. I'm also going to keep track of the length of the array, like this, we'll call it n. And now I need to have a for loop. So I want to start from the top left and the top right at the same time. So I can do that just by having a variable go from i to n, from 0 to n. And then if I'm doing the top left, the sum increases by whatever matrix i i is at. And then if I'm doing from the top right to the bottom left, you'll remember I want to do it from i to n minus i minus 1. So this will count up from both diagonals, but then the last thing I need to do is check if the array is odd. I can do that like this. And if that's the case, I want to subtract the midpoint. So sum will go down by whatever n over 2 is, the position, the number at n over 2. So in my test cases, I also included the other given examples. Let's see, 25, 8, and 5, 25, 8, and 5. These are the examples I used over here, example 1, 2, and 3. Looks like we got the right answer. Let's submit and see if we did. Yep, 0 milliseconds, success. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions or have any problems you would like to see me do, please let me know. I forgot to talk about the time and space complexity of the algorithm, so let's do that real quick. So for the time, I had one for loop, so it would be big O of n, and the space, we only used a variable to keep track of the sum, so we had constant space. If you are unfamiliar with big O notation, you can check out my video on that. Thanks.